Good evening. Welcome, everyone. I'd like to call the Anacortes City Council meeting of June 8, 2020, to order. Ms. Hunt, would you take the roll? Mr. Carter? Here. Mr. Young? Here. Mr. Walters? Here. Ms. Cleland McGrath? Here. Ms. Moulton? Here. Mr. McDougall? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on now to item two, um, 2A, under announcements and committee reports. And I'll first of all start with my COVID-19 update. On Friday, the governor moved Skagit County into phase two. Uh, we were ready and we're off, we're off. Uh, but under phase two, I just wanna remind people that it's a continue to stay home and stay healthy phase. Um, under recreation, we can do anything in recreation with five or fewer people outside your household. You can go camping, you can go to the beach, you can ride your, your mountain bike. For gatherings, there should be no more than five people outside your household per week. So if you do something with a group of friends, uh, uh, do it once a week and then go back home to your home and your family. Um, for travel, essential travel and limited non-essential travel for phase one and two is permissible, permissible activity at this time. We also were able to open up our remaining manufacturing. We were also able to um, add additional construction phases, in-home domestic services, such as house cleaning um, and nannies. Our retail stores were able to reopen um, and they're allowed with some um, restrictions, but they're allowed to have in-store purchases. Real estate offices can reopen. Professional services, office-based businesses. Telework though remains strongly encouraged in this phase. Our hair salons and our barbers and our nail salons can open following all the normal protocol for social distancing, pet grooming, restaurants and taverns can open at less than 50% capacity and no larger tables more than five people at a table. So we're all pretty darn excited. Downtown merchants were doing a little dance on Friday afternoon, literally in the street. So within the next three to four weeks, we get to go into phase three. And it's important though, that we do this correctly. We wanna to remember to continually to social distance, do our hand washing, wear our face masks, and continue our COVID-19 protocols so that we don't undo what we've already done. We don't wanna spike. We don't wanna go back to where we were a month or two ago. So that's just a reminder. So in addition to COVID-19, there's been some other um, challenges in our community. And this past, this past week, I think, challenged all of us, not only in our community, in the United States and globally. And we're all challenged, we're challenged with, because we're in ways that we never ima imagined. And we are facing systemic racism and we're recognizing our role in making meaningful change in our society. So I think that was, something that came front and center in the last week in a way that I don't think a lot of us heard or understood it before. Along with that, the city council um, fully supports the rights of citizens to peacefully assemble, well, I should say city council and myself, to peacefully assemble and demonstrate, and we demonstrated this by our participation with the Anacortes Police Department and uh, some of the elected officials in our local protest on Saturday afternoon. We're trying to be proactive and it's now an opportune time to continue to build trust and relationships with all of our local institutions and community members. The council and I recognize the legitimate and nationwide concern of excessive use of force used by some police departments. But the council and I, we totally support our Anacortes Police Department for their stellar work 
that they provide every day of the year for, for public safety to all of our citizens. We're committed to an open dialogue and a review of our police policies so each citizen can be as confident as we are in the Anacortes Police Department. And that concludes my comments for this evening. Thank you so much. Is there any, anyone want to add to that before we move to the next item? Thank you. Uh, uh, Councilman Young. Really, I, I want to say a, thank, uh, a big shout out of thanks to uh, the people of our town. They, as far as the protest movement was concerned, they showed their faces as being one of kindness and compassion for all lives, and particularly as it was surrounding Black Lives Matter, but that was really a genesis for the issues that we're facing as a community in addressing systematic racism. But the wonderful side of that was the love that was on the streets. People were talking their horns, there were people showing support, and I, and I really appreciated the fact that you were there, Mayor Gear, as well as um, Chief Smalls walking and talking to the various people in the streets. It bodes so wonderfully well for telling the story, not only of our town, but the work that we're willing to do here in our town, although I think it's already wonderful, but it also bodes to tell of an opportunity ahead for all of us to continue to strengthen our town and also make sure that our police force continue to have the tools that it needs to address all of the needs of the community. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely um, just happy to call this my home. And thank you for the council members that showed up, those that wish they could be there. I mean, all of you were there, you worked the crowd like crazy and uh, they were happy to see your faces. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Young. Is there any other comments? Mayor Gear? Uh, yes, Mr. Miller. I just had a, I know it seems like we've forgotten about COVID, but did, were, are there new numbers from Skagit County that I missed? Um, um, I don't have that you normally I brief? Have. Um, okay. I will on Wednesday. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No, we haven't forgotten about COVID. And then actually okay. that's, um, that needs to be our yeah, priority. Thank you very Thanks. much. Okay. All right. So the next item, item 2B, the Port City Liaison Committee meeting. Do we have an update? Uh, Mayor Gear? Ms. Cleveland McGrath. Yes. Uh, Council Member Carter and Council Member Young were there with me. Uh, we had our first Port City Liaison meeting for a couple months. And we got to see everyone on the on the computer screen, so it was nice to catch up with the various uh, stakeholders. Um, so first of all, we did kind of an update from the city's perspective and the port's perspective about how COVID has had an impact on both entities. Um, we shared about the the hope that we do this um, uh, outdoor seating right with the. Uh, with the parklets and um, restaurants kind of encouraging them to get outside and have the right, uh, a better number for um, tables. And the port was happy about that as we start to see more visitors come into our marina. Um, we also talked a little bit about the grant program that we'll talk about later in our tax committee report. Um, the port itself is considered is deemed essential services. So they've kind of, they've tried to work through this whole crisis and and use the best um, uh, practices possible um, with spacing their uh, staff and working with clients and whatnot. They are having to do some adjustment for lost income um, and they are do, they're working to uh, uh, accommodate that. But the good news is they kind of have four major projects. The ADOC project, Quiet Cove Cleanup, Curtis Wharf, and then Pier One doing some repairs on that, and they feel confident that they can continue to move forward without delay. And those are about $13 million in projects, which uh, they shared with us ends up working out to, about, to be about $260,000 in sales tax, which is a direct benefit to our city. So thank you for that. Uh, we also talked about the Maritime Strategic Plan. They are working with the McDowell Group and will have a, a presentation to the port commissioners 
want to say the second meeting in August, so that could be really interesting to learn more about. The, the one thing that we talked about was the depot restroom um, and where that is with the city in the process of survey and, and development. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to be ready for a few more months, but that the the port is seeing a lot of people request the use of uh, their facility, bathroom facilities, because we're about, we're seeing about 20 to 40 percent increase in park and public use spaces. So we are going to work with the port to see if we can get some temporary uh, porta potties out there so that they're not taking the brunt of um, requests for using restrooms. And then the final one is um, the Northwest Basin Redevelopment. They are working on getting some grants to continue that the necessary project moving forward in the West Basin. Um, so we hope to continue our talks and, and strategize how we can best work together for that project. I don't know if any of the rest of the group has something to add. Mr. Yellow? If I would, um, um, great assessment there, Ms. Cleveland McGrath. Uh, the one thing I wanted to add was that the port mentioned that the Anacortes vote and yacht show in July will go virtual for the first time. And I thought it important to mention that simply because we want to support it. We want to tell as many people as possible about it and just support that endeavor. So it will go virtual in July and um, anything you can do to help that process would be great, greatly appreciated. Thank you. I might mention that last year when the boat show went on, um, that month, the, our sales tax, I think, was the highest it had been. It was because we sold a couple really big boats. So if we could sell a couple of boats virtually this year, it would be a wonderful thing for Anacortes to bring in the sales tax. So um, anything else on the port? So while you were giving the report, I looked up on the county website, Mr. Miller, and as of yesterday, we've had 449 positive cases of COVID. We've had 51 people hospitalized. We've had 15 deaths. And we, to date, have 308 people have recovered in Skagit County. So thank you. Thanks for that reminder, Mr. Miller. All right, at this time, we'll move on to item 2C, which is our public safety committee report. Mayor Gear. Mr. Carter. So we had our meeting last week. I guess this was before we went into phase two. So a couple of things may have changed. Uh, but from the fire department, uh, their call volume uh, in May uh, was back to normal as it's where it was from previous months. And their COVID-19 uh, calls had a significant drop. And as regards to PPE, they have everything that they need for their calls. Uh, so they're continuing to wear face masks and social distance when going out. Uh, but other than that, business is getting back to normal. Uh, they are fully staffed, and they don't currently have anyone out on injury or disability. And on the police side, uh, I just kind of want to bring up that the Citizens Patrol hasn't been happening because of the COVID-19. Uh, but again, that was uh, also before phase two, so I don't know if it's picked up since then, uh, but dealing with uh, being able to get the cars properly cleaned uh, so they haven't been doing the citizens patrol. I, th I think the police department's going to wait to phase four because we usually have two people in a vehicle and it's an elderly population. So they do incredible work of being the eyes of the community, but it's going to be another couple of phases until we get that help. Any other report from the Public Safety Committee? I just wanted to say one more thing. Uh, the police, talk, the Chief Small talked about the fact that they've gotten a lot of inquiries about doing um, fingerprinting because that's been shut down to the public for quite some time due to COVID. And right now, the way we do it is kind of old fashioned where, you know, it's ink and paper. Um, and that that could be an opportunity to upgrade to a more digital format. Um, they have it at the county, but it's a pretty spendy machine, and that could qualify for the CARES Act funding. Mm -hmm. um, so that we can, there's a lot of people that need um, uh, fingerprinting done for their, their career, their jobs and whatnot. 
So um, that is something that kind of is, could be on the docket in the future when we start to talk about how to spend those funds. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Anything else? All right, we'll move on to item 2D, the fiber committee. Uh, Mayor Gare. Mr. McDougall. Fiber committee met Thursday afternoon and um, we got a very positive report from the team. Mm -hmm. uh, the latest numbers actually Emily uh, mentioned it just before the meeting, we're up to 182 active customers on the network. I'm, I'm guessing as of Thursday, 32 of those were businesses, and I'm guessing we probably haven't added businesses to that number. So um, if that being the case, we're probably up to about 150 um, uh, enabled residential customers. Um, the total revenue mix has us at um, <clears throat> about $11,500 per month. And also wanted to mention, I did a little quick comparison with the, the original model. The original business model projected like a, a blended average residential revenue of uh, $46.50 per, <clears throat> per customer. So that's, you know, the, the mix of customers that sign up for 100 meg service and one gig service. And whatever percentage that is, it results in, you know, that, that average amount per month. And right now we're running about 14% higher per, per residential uh, customer on revenue. So that's actually really positive from the standpoint of the business model. You know, as we approach 35%, <clears throat> we're actually making more revenue per customer than, than the model projected. So that's really good. On the business side, the average is about 3% above what the model projected. So that's, that's also good. It's not quite as a big a, big a jump, but still very, very good number. <clears throat> Thank you. Any yeah. additional comments? Um, they've, the team has started scoping and designing with the NOAA the aerial expansion areas that would bring us past, you know, after the initial 1,000 addresses that we passed, an additional 1,300 um, <clears throat> addresses that are served by aerial, aerial utilities. And we've got pre-signups in those places already for <clears throat> kind of in the 10 to 10 to 13 percent. So. Uh, so we're already getting quite a bit of interest and in signups in those areas. And that's kind of the, the highlights of the um, of the update for now. Oh, I also wanted to call out they've got an order placed for their first uh, private point-to-point uh, -point Ethernet circuit. And so a private circuit like this generates quite a bit more revenue than the, the standard just kind of internet connection uh, on the business side. So congrats to the, the fiber team on getting that private Ethernet circuit. That's a nice, uh, shot of additional monthly revenue as well. Great. Right. Mayor Gear. Mr. Miller. And and uh, I, I think it was this meeting where we learned that the city hall is now where we're on our own uh, we're on our own system now. So yeah. it, it, revenue not going out is also a good thing. Right. Uh, so that, I was happy to hear that. Yeah, thank you for that, Mr. Miller. Anything else? Okay. We'll move on then to item 2E, it's our Housing Affordability and Community Services Committee. Mayor Gere, that's uh, me again. Ms. Kalila McGrath. So we had a pretty brief meet hacks meeting today, but we did hit on a couple of points that I wanted to share with you all. Um, Mr. Hoglin was unavailable, but we will be working with him in the near future to work on our MLA for the affordable housing tax and how that's going to work out. So expect to see some information from us in the next couple weeks or months. Um, and then the other one is our grant program through HUD, the, the application process closed. And so I just wanna give a huge shout out to Joanne Stewart. Um, she really took the lead and was available to answer questions and assist um, with the application process. It was beyond complicated. So she really worked with our business owners and followed up and gave extra time so that as many businesses could apply and apply successfully as possible. So we actually had about 49 applications and because of the restrictions, especially when it comes to the income requirements, we ended up with about 16 that were qualified. Um, so, uh, uh, we will, we've got our committee kind of ad hoc committee that will then go through um, and review those applications. 
We've got about the $155,000 and 68,000 of that right now is available. The other 115,000 um, still has to be approved probably in July. And then it takes about 30 days to get the funding to the city. So we are gonna look at a couple options to see about how we disperse the funds to the, the recipients, either giving a partial amount that we have using the $68,000 we have now and giving it out partially or, and then the other half when the rest of the funds come in or if it's a need base, but we want to be as flexible as possible. So we have as many successful businesses as um, recipients. So that's about all we discussed, unless um, Mr. Walters or Ms. Moulton has anything to add. No? Okay. All right, then we'll move on then to our planning committee. Mayor Garrett? Olson. Um, so the planning committee met directly before this meeting, um, Mr. Walters and Ms. Cleveland McGrath and I, um, with Mr. Miesmer from planning. Um, who filled us in on what's going on at that department, um, including that the building and planning department is very, very busy right now. He did use the word swamp. Um, they are um, getting about 105 calls per week from people. So it's great to see that level of activity and permit processing going on. That bodes well for our near future. Um, and then we talked about some things that are waiting in the wings for us. Um, that we would like to address as soon as possible. And those two things are the critical areas ordinance and the shoreline master program. And because we need and want a robust public process, we're not really able to do that right now with virtual constraints that we have um, and things going on due to the virus. So there is a PowerPoint on, on, the, on the planning department webpage so people can review the sh a lot of information about the Shoreline Master Program to sort of come up to speed before we really delve in in person. Um, and staff is also working on a PowerPoint for the Critical Areas Ordinance so that we can do our homework and familiarize ourselves um, with the chapters and, and be ready when that discussion begins. Um, because we really need to have public hearings. And so kind of the question is when will we be able to, we be able to have those um, and how to get the, the most public participation in this process. Um, so it was mainly a discussion about process and how we're gonna do that. So that's ongoing. Um, also, we talked about um, our downtown economic um, sort of recovery program, including the parklets. Um, we, we saw a map of potential street closure of the commercial, the central business district um, with drop off and pickup sites adjacent to commercial avenues. So even though the street will be closed to cars, people will be able to pick up food and drop off people. And um, so it will be really functional. Um, and we also discussed parameters for the parklets. Um, slash streeteries, and those will be subject to an application process from the businesses. Um, it will be an agreement with the city um, how those will be um, maintained and what the parameters are for those. So the resolution um, will, is being prepared by staff that will come to council on July 6th um, with a guide for expanded service for restaurants and retail establishments coming outside onto the sidewalks and into the parklets. Um, so that's, that's coming up, so that's being worked on. Um, and also our community outreach piece to let people, everyone know about that. Um, the parklets are estimated to arrive in mid-July. And um, so we're, we're, we're figuring out when we can really roll those out and in which phase and particularly for the open streets type event. Um, but that's all moving along and um, merchants and restaurants are excited about those opportunities and looking forward to downtown coming more back to life than it already is. Thanks. Thank you. Are there any additions or questions? Okay, we'll move on then to item three. It's our consent agenda. Items A, B, and C. Mayor here. Mr. Miller. Hearing uh, no comments, I move to approve uh, consent agenda items A through C. Second. 
We have a motion by Mr. Miller, a second by Mr. Young. Is there any additional comment? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Is there anything else under other business? Anything good for the order? Okay. Well, at this time, I adjourn the meeting. Have a lovely evening. I'll see you all sometime this week. All right. Bye-bye.